Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you so much to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support our channel while doing so, you can check out the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy the singles from this deck right there. If you are interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So today's episode is going to be on the new zombie lord on the block, Narfi the Betrayer King. Let's take a look at Narfi and see what he is about. So he he is a legendary snow creature zombie wizard that costs three generic mana, a blue and a black. And he gives all of our other snow and zombie creatures that we control plus one plus one. He is a four three and he has an activated ability for three snow mana. We can return him from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. This is a really interesting commander. He cares about snow and he cares about zombies and he can be returned from the graveyard over and over again, which is super cool. And the zombie archetype is super well supported with a really deep card pool stretching all the way back to the beginning sets of Magic the Gathering. And there are many fantastic zombie tribal commanders, all of which that could be substituted very easily for Narfi. But I think Narfi is a very viable commander and being a lord inside of the command zone, I think is really powerful and can provide for a very powerful deck. Now from my description of the deck, this is focusing very much on the zombie tribal. There is a little bit of snow support, but mostly just so we can use Narfi's ability and a couple of other spells in the deck. I haven't really put any other snow creatures into this deck because like I said, I wanted to focus on the zombie tribe. So you are going to like this deck if you enjoy having a combat focused deck with a Lord in the command zone and you aren't looking to have a deck that is super reliant on the commander. And if you like tribal decks and you like tribes that have their fingers in multiple strategies. So zombies is a really cool tribe because of the colors that they're in that opens up some other archetypes types like reanimators, some aristocrats style stuff. So there it's more than just playing lots of zombies and swinging out for the win. There are some other things that this deck can do. So with no further ado, let's kick off this deck tech with the ramp. So this deck is a little light on ramp and that's because it really doesn't need the acceleration that a lot of decks really need to have. We'd rather be playing zombies than wasting turns playing mana rocks and a lot of our zombies are really efficiently costed. So we've got just your generic mana rock package. So we've got Arcane Signet, Charcoal and Sky Diamond, a Demir Signet, a Soul Ring and a Wayfarer's Bobble. So those are the mana rocks that we are playing. Like I said, we're not playing a tremendous amount. This deck is really focusing on getting its pieces out and they're efficiently costed and we aren't in a huge race to get our commander out he is kind of expensive and we really want to cast him after we have a really nice board state and like i said we are going to want to be playing down zombies and we have a lot of really value engine value churning out zombies so let's go into those right now so we've got Corpse Augur, which when it dies, it lets us draw X cards and lose X life for X is the number of creature cards in target player's graveyard. We are playing about 32, 33 creatures, so oftentimes this is going to draw us a ton of cards. We also have Corpse Harvester, which lets us sacrifice a zombie to search our library for a zombie or a swamp, reveal them, put them into our hand, and shuffle our library. We then have Crypt Breaker, which does a lot, so we can pay two mana, discard a card, and make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, and we can tap three untapped zombies to draw a card and lose a life. This deck makes a ton of zombie tokens, we will have a ton of zombies, this is going to draw us a ton of cards throughout the game. We then have a Diagraph Colossus, which when it enters a battlefield, it's going to get a plus one plus one counter for each zombie card in our graveyard. And whenever we cast a zombie spell, we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. We then have a brand new zombie from Kaldheim with Draugr Necromancer. Whenever a non-token creature and opponents of ours controls dies, we get to exile it with an ice counter on it instead. And we can cast spells from among cards in exile that our opponents own with ice counters on them. And we can spend mana from snow sources as though they were mana of any color to cast that spell. So this is the first card in the deck that is a snow creature that cares about snow. And this is a really cool card. I'm really excited to test this. I think it can do some super cool things. Exiling our opponent's creatures and keeping them from hitting the graveyard is already a really powerful effect. And the fact that we can cast them, super cool. We then have God Eternal Bantu, which when it enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice any number of other permanents and draw that many cards. So this can turn a lot of our zombie tokens or zombies into just raw card draw. 
We then have Grave Spawn Sovereign, which is a super cool card. I'm glad I found it. It's got some really wacky art. We can tap five untapped zombies that we control to put any creature card from a graveyard into play under our control. So with how many zombies that we have, we can be stealing a lot of things from our opponent's graveyards. We then have Haven Goal Lich, which we can pay one mana to activate its ability to cast a creature card in any graveyard this turn. And when we cast that card this turn, Haven Goal Lich is going to gain all activated abilities of that card until the end of the turn. So this can do some pretty powerful things. We can cast a creature card from our graveyard or an opponent's graveyard, and Haven Goal Lich is going to become a pseudo copy of that card, so I think that's pretty useful. We then have Liliana's Standard Bearer. It's a flash zombie that when it enters the battlefield, we're going to draw X cards where X is the number of creatures that died under our control this turn. Along those same lines of drawing cards, we've got Midnight Reaper, which whenever a non-token creature that we control dies, we're going to take one damage from this and we're going to draw a card. We then have Prized Amalgam, which whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, we get to return this from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. So this has some pretty good synergy with our commander. Every time we bring Narfi back from the graveyard, if Prized Amalgam is in there, it will come back with it at the end of the turn. Having a repeatable, recurrable zombie that triggers, you know, some of the death triggers that we have going on later in this deck tech or a lot of the draw triggers whenever a creature we control dies, I think that's super useful. We then have Tomebound Lich that has Death Touch and Lifelink, and when it enters a battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So drawing and discarding a card looting is, I think, pretty useful in this deck because you've seen so far up until this point in, the, in this category, we really care about graveyards. We've got a lot of synergy with the graveyard, so being able to put maybe some of our more expensive costed zombies into the graveyard to reanimate them later, I think is really useful. We then have Undead Augur, which whenever a zombie that we control dies, we're going to draw a card and lose a life. We then have a free sack outlet with Carrion Feeder and a massive beater with Unbreathing Horde. So Unbreathing Horde is going to enter the battlefield with a plus one plus encounter on it for each other zombie that we control and each zombie card in our graveyard. So it's kind of similar to Diagraph Colossus. And if the Horde would be dealt damage, we get to prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus encounter from it instead. So that is a super hard to kill creature with combat damage. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the value-packed zombies in this deck, let's go over the lords, which is probably one of the most iconic things about the zombie tribe, is simply how many lords that there are. There were a couple of lords that I had to exclude from this deck just because of cost. Some of them are kind of expensive as this tribe gets more and more popular. Be that as it may, we are still playing a whopping 10 lords on creatures and 2 enchantment lords, so I think that this already is a really good number of lords. What I love best about these lords is they're not not just lords, all of them have some type of added benefit stapled onto them that is actually pretty relevant. So let's start off with Cemetery Reaper. It's going to give all of our zombies plus one plus one. We can pay three mana to tap it and exile a creature card from a graveyard to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Graveyard Hate is really useful in a lot of metas and being able to exile any creature from a graveyard at instant speed and get a token out of it is really useful. We then have Death Baron, which is going to give all of our zombies plus one plus one and Death Touch. And then Diagraph Captain is going to give all of our zombies plus one plus one. And whenever another zombie that we control dies, one of our opponents is going to lose one life. We then have Gleaming Overseer, which is going to give only our zombie tokens, Hexproof and Menace. But we have so many ways of making zombie tokens and that is such a powerful, those are two really powerful keywords, definitely worth playing. We then have Liliana's Devotee, so it's only going to give our zombies plus one plus O, but at the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn, we can pay one and a black to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. We then have Lord of the Accursed, which is going to give all of our zombies plus one plus one, and we can pay one and a black to tap it to give all of our zombies menace until end of turn. Next up, we have Risen Executioner, which cannot block, and it's going to give all of our other zombies plus one plus one. We can cast it from our graveyard, it does kind of cost a ton of mana to do that, but eh, it's good to be there. That is some extra value. And then we have Undead Warchief for the last Lord that is a zombie. It's going to make all of our zombies one less to cast, which is really good. And it's going to give all of our zombies plus two plus one instead of the generic plus one plus one. So down in the enchantment category, we also have Liliana's Mastery, which when it ETBs is going to give us two black zombie creature tokens and pump all of our zombies by plus one plus one. And then we have Graph Harvest, which doesn't actually give our zombies a power buff, but it does give all of them menace, which honestly is really useful. And then we can pay three and a black to exile a creature card from our graveyard to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. 
So that is 10 lords, including our commander, and then two enchantments that are kind of lords too. So that is a ton of lord support for this deck. So between the lords and the value engines in this deck, sometimes you're going to need a little bit more to help close out the game. And fortunately for this deck, we have a very powerful way of doing that. So you kind of already saw it with Diagraph Captain. We have a couple different ways of draining our opponent's life, kind of like how zombies like to eat brains. We then have probably the most iconic zombie of all time, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, also known as Gary. When it ETBs, each of our opponents is going to lose X life, where X is our devotion to black, and then we're going to gain life equal to the life lost this way. You can look at this deck on the tapped out page. This deck is primarily black, so we have the opportunity to have a lot of devotion to black. We then have Plague Belcher, which is going to dome each of our opponents for one life every time one of our zombies dies. We then have Shepherd of Rot, which is going to make each player lose one life for each zombie on the battlefield. Now, we do need to be a little bit careful with this one because it does hit us. We just have to make sure that our life total is above our opponents, which shouldn't be too hard with how much attacking we're going to be doing. I'm putting Diagraph Captain in this category again, just for transparency. It is a really powerful way of closing out games. We can sacrifice zombies or if they die in combat or if there's a board wipe that happens, one of our opponents is going to take a lot of damage from this. So to round out the creature base, we've got some interactive zombies and a pair of human siblings. So we've got Fleshbag Marauder, which when it ETBs is going to make everybody sacrifice a creature. We have Murderous Rider that can be cast as a sorcery to kill a creature. And then we have Nauseous Ghoul, which whenever Nauseous Ghoul or another zombie enters the battlefield, that's going to give all non-zombie creatures minus one, minus one until end of turn. So this can get out of hand pretty quickly, especially considering it doesn't specify that that creature has to be a non-token. So whenever we make zombie tokens, with the plethora of effects that we have that do that, it's really going to be taxing for our opponent's boards. And then, like I mentioned, we do have a pair of human siblings with Gisa and Jeralf, and I really feel like these this pair could be substituted for Narfi if you ever get bored of having Narfi and you want to have a commander that can, you know, do stuff from the graveyard. So when they enter the battlefield, we're going to mill four, and during each of our turns, we can cast a zombie creature card from our graveyard. I think that's a super underrated ability. Every turn, being able to bring a zombie back from the yard, super powerful. So those are all of the creatures and a couple enchantments from the deck, but there is still some more that this deck can do. So let's go over the interaction and protection packages we have to keep our opponents at bay, you know, protect our stuff from getting destroyed. So we've got Feed the Swarm, Drag it to the Underworld, Go for the Throat, and Reality Shift as our targeted removal. These are all instant speed, really efficiently costed and get the job done really well. Feed the Swarm being able to take care of enchantments, which is a permanent that Black normally can't really deal with. We then have Lazatep Plating, which is really good at keeping our board alive from like targeted removal and we have just one counter spell with counter squall can counter non-creature spell maybe a board wipe that we don't want to happen or you know some type of spot removal and then the controller of that spell is going to lose some life this deck really is more of a proactive deck we're trying to you know worry about our board and we're not super concerned on our opponent so we then have some board wipes with blood on the snow being able to hit all creatures or all planeswalkers and then we get to reanimate something depending on how much snow mana we use we then have Crippling Fear, which is going to let us basically have a one-sided board wipe. It's going to give all non-zombie creatures, if that's the type that we choose, minus three, minus three. And then we have Dead of Winter, which is one of the other cards in the deck that really cares about snow. It's going to give all creatures minus X, minus X, where X is the number of snow lands that we control. And then this next category, I have called More Zombies, because there's always room for more zombies. So Army of the Damned is going to give us 13 tap zombie tokens, and we can flash it back for 10 mana to make 13 more zombie tokens. We then have Rise of the Dread Marn, which has Foretell, so we can pay two mana to exile from our hand, and we can pay one black mana to cast it on a later turn, and is going to make X zombie creature tokens, where X is the number of creatures that died this turn, so we can tactfully cast this after a board wipe, maybe a board wipe that we had cast, uh, with it only costing one black mana after we foretell it, like, that's so feasible to cast a board wipe and then cast this. We then have another enchantment with Necromancer's Stockpile. We can pay one a black to discard a creature card to draw a card. And if the discarded card was a zombie, we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tap. So we can get rid of maybe, you know, some of the more expensive zombies in our hand if we get them at the beginning of the game and maybe we want to reanimate them later. Not super useful. Turn them into blockers, attackers, you know, whatever we need. And then we get to draw cards. I think it's just a lot of utility for this deck. We then have Cemetery Recruitment, which lets us return any creature card from our graveyard to our hand. And if it's a zombie, zombie we get to draw a card. We then have Dread Return which we can cast from our hand to return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield and we can flash it back from our graveyard by sacrificing three creatures to do it again. 
We then have Ghoul Caller's Chant, which lets us return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand, or two zombie cards from our graveyard to our hand. So for one black mana, super efficient. We then have Victimize, that lets us trade one creature in play for two creatures in our graveyard. And then we have Animate Dead, which lets us get a creature card from any graveyard. And then we have Living Death, which is probably one of my favorite magic cards of all times. Basically, everybody switches all of the creatures that they have in play for the creatures that they have in their graveyard. And then finally, for this category, we have a card that I still to this day think is incredibly underrated, and that is Grimoire of the Dead. So it is a legendary artifact that lets us pay one generic mana to tap it and discard a card to put a study counter on it. We can then tap it and remove three study counters from the Grimoire and sacrifice it to put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under our control and they all become black zombies in addition to other colors and types. If we pop this off, you know, mid to late game, it's probably just game over for our opponents. Getting everybody's creatures, turning them all into zombies that triggers all of our lords, you know, triggers all of our when zombies die abilities, you know, shepherd of rot. I mean, it's just, this is just so good in this deck. And then the last category in this deck before we get into the mana base is the category I have called Draw Me Zombies because we always want to have more zombies. So we've got Windfall, which is just very generic wheel. Everyone's going to discard their hands and draw cards equal to the greatest amount of cards discarded this way. Factor Fiction, which at instant speed lets us reveal the top five cards of our library to an opponent. They separate them into two piles. We get to pick one and the other goes into our graveyard. Forbidden Alchemy gets us some card selection from the top of our library and, and the other cards that we do not want go into our graveyard and we can flash it back later for more value if we need and then the final card in this category is a new card from Kaldheim that cares about snow and that is graven lore at instant speed and for five mana we scry x where x is the amount of snow mana spent to cast this spell and then we draw three cards i wasn't super hot on this card until i saw it cast a couple times in some of the games that we recorded that will be coming out soon and i was actually really impressed by it so i i'm it's definitely worth a slot in this deck and finally, let's go over the mana base. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna be playing 15 snow-covered swamps, 12 snow-covered islands, a choked estuary, a command tower, an exotic orchard, a drowned catacomb, a sunken hollow, a dismal backwater, a demir aqueduct, a myriad landscape for some extra ramp. And then we will also be playing the new snow-covered dual land for blue-black ice tunnel. And that is it for this zombie tribal deck tech helmed by Narfi the Betrayer King. I hope you guys really enjoyed this deck tech. I'm actually really considering building this deck. I've always wanted a zombie tribal deck. And if I'm being honest, I love the showcase art for Narfi. I think it is so freaking cool. I love the Kaldheim showcase arts. They're all amazing. So this one in particular though, really just like, man, it's so cool. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We really appreciate your support. Just want to give a huge thank you to all of our subscribers and all of our patrons. You guys rock. We really couldn't do this without you. So just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our deck techs that we release every Monday and our gameplay videos that we're going to be releasing every month. And if you guys are interested in becoming a Patreon, you can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash command belly to sign up today. You get access to our Discord, merch, early videos, extra content, and a bunch of other perks. And if you are interested in purchasing any of the cards from the deck or purchasing this deck outright, there will be a link in the description that you can go over to Game Grid and purchase all the cards from there. They have an awesome card selection, so you can definitely do that if you're interested. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have an amazing week.